All right, so this is my last one. You can notice it's a lot sharper focus than the others, and I probably don't want it that strong. So I'm using my eraser. Take some of those edges away. But I might want it that sharp in some places. It also has these nice wisps coming across it, which help tell me which way the wind is blowing. That can help inform some of the other select things I do. Um, so how do I smooth it in? Well, I go to a much lower opacity eraser. And especially around the areas where there's cutouts anyway, I just knock it back using my tablet. Soften it, even at the edges. Because all that's behind it is other cloud and sky. I don't need to be afraid of that. I don't want it to feel like it's collaged on top of the other clouds. I want it to feel like it's part of this big cloud mass with these other little wisps going on. Okay, so now I can take that whole mass and play with opacity. And yeah, I think I, I like it. It's helpful. So now I've got all of my smart layers that I'm going to use deleted. Saving it. I want to keep my memory good. I've got good kind of complexity around that foot. And I haven't done anything for the back foot yet. I don't have anything for the ears except for my original cutout. I've still got some spikes from my original cutout showing. I've still got some shadow from the original cutout showing for the for the uh, tail. So what happens if I just turn off the original cutout? Well, it's not quite communicating my creature yet. In fact, these look like little legs. That looks like the head. This looks like a little bird tail. So there's more to do. And I'm going to do that with clone stamping. Okay. Now this is how we're going to do that. What I'm going to do is turn off my sky, turn off my creature, even turn off my, my uh, outline. So now this is all just my cloud composites on top. It's like texture wrangling. I've corralled them all into this area. And from that I might decide, you know what, I need to erase out a little bit more in here on that layer, bring some of that softness back. Yes, that helps. Right. Okay, now with only those showing, I'm going to hold down Option. And actually, before I do that to make it easy, let me select all of those layers that are turned on by holding down shift, selecting all of them so they're gray, and then putting them into a folder and calling this my texture group. This just makes it easy to turn them on and off. Okay, there they are. With sky, there they are. Okay, now because they're the only ones showing, I'm going to hold down option and say layer merge visible. Because I'm holding down option, it will merge them all into a new layer on top. There it is. Now I can turn back the sky, I can turn back the background cutout, I can turn back my creature. Turn those all back on. The reason to merge them all is so that now I can use clone stamp. And I'm going to use it on a layer on top, just like we did with assignment two. I'm going to mark that layer red. It's a special effect layer. I'm going to name it Clone Stamp. And I'm going to use the Clone Stamp tool, which is two above the eraser. And I'm going to set it to work on uh, the current and below layers. Actually, I want to use it only on the current layer. This is what I want to do. I want to duplicate that copy. Mark that as clone stamp. Because <laughs> I don't want to accidentally, the whole reason is I don't want to accidentally paint sky. Right? I don't want to use blue at all. I only want to be painting with clouds. So let's look at the architecture of what I have here now. I have a layer which is just the cloud textures. I have another copy of the cloud textures underneath that, which is my combined layer. So I don't screw it up. I have my cutout underneath that, I have my creature, and then I have my fill-in for the sky. Now because I've set the clone stamp to only work on the current layer, and if I keep it on this red clone stamp layer, that means it will only paint clouds here 
on top. I'm going to make my brush large, soft edged, pressure sensitive, and I want its opacity not quite to be 100. I'm going to make it about 70. Then I'm going to target the areas I think are most useful, like this, this kind of cluster here. And I'm going to paint that at the base of the ears here. So this is to give you a lot of practice with clone stamp. This is very much like oil painting. We're just, this is our palette, our palette of textures. And I need shadow now, shadow for the ear. So I'm gonna paint that shadow in nice and soft edged, only stealing cloud. I need some highlight on the ear on that side. So where can I take that from? Be right here. Travel, the selection travels up with me. And as I overlay it, because it's only at 71%, they will keep creating new cloud textures. That should be pretty believable, because there shouldn't be any sharp edges in there. See? Now the transition with the neck and the shadows under the neck. I might take some of this shadow and extend that. But I might also break it up here and extend that in to kind of suggest an eye. Bring a little bit of that texture in. And this top of the head shadow. What about the other ear? Let's see what would work for that. Maybe about here. I'm not trying to be too literal, I'm just trying to suggest the shape. Kind of cut in between, and get underneath. Yeah, there we go, something like that. Now if I need more softness, I can steal that from the tail. But if I need more sharpness on the tail, I can clone stamp that in as well. If I don't like the wispiness, I can break it up. In a very believable way with more cloud texture and if the colors get kind of spotty I can keep clone stamping and kind of uh, glaze over them because I'm using a soft brush at a lower opacity again you don't want it to look too clone stamped or to copy paste anywhere. But what I'm not doing is stealing from the blue and painting with blue. It won't let me because I'm only clone stamping from a current layer, which are just the clouds. So I'm only adding texture, like sticking it into a cotton candy machine, swirling it around. Now for the feet, let me steal some of this, get that back foot, some wispiness in there. Let me break some of this up and cut out the neck from the head a little bit. All right. And then which areas kind of stand out? Problematic. These spikes need to be softened. Pale here. to be more believably broken up. No, that doesn't work. Okay, now, if I turn off that clone stamp layer, did it help? Yeah, definitely. It brings a lot of definition on top. And then what's missing, I can use underneath. So I can erase from the clone stamp layer and underneath. Let's do it more than 25%. Let's do it almost 100%. Okay, 
because I have redundancy now in these layers. And I should feel empowered to kind of take away from any of them. As long as they're soft edged, it shouldn't matter. Even at this point, I can start taking away from my, my cutout layer. And then I'm going to gouge and blur my cutout layer so its edges aren't sharp. So wherever they are sticking out, they are not too, too crisp. Uh, that's too much gouging blur, but it's the right idea. I love it because you can set how strong. So I want maybe about that strong. And now I can turn back on my layers. They should pop up in a minute. And now erase away to define my creature again. Turn off the texture group. There we go. Okay, now as a finishing step, I'm going to use a new tool, which is called the smudge tool, just to stretch some of these. But any other things you want to do, like if I want to show that, that change of the leg there, a clone stamp is a very effective tool for that like so. So whenever you really have a problem, just add more content on top and then be willing to kind of blend it in. You don't want everything to be really flat though. So don't make everything all the same texture everywhere, or everything all of the same edge control everywhere. But if I don't like that shadow on the tail, I can clone stamp over the top and then I can erase it away kind of selectively. And that's going to be helpful. So you see how much that clone stamp layer will, will help fix things. Okay, so now, how do I use the smudge tool? And where should I use it? Well, I'm going to use it on my top layer, my clone stamp layer and it is underneath the gradient tool. And you can use just a standard brush for it. It takes a while, so I'm gonna use the pressure sensitive brush. Come on, up top. Pre soft pressure, soft round pressure size brush. And what I can use this for is to kind of tug. If I know the wind's kind of blowing this way, I can just tug at some of these edges. I'll show you what that does. Come on. If I move slowly enough, it will be like wind. And it's just tugging at the edges of the cloud. And we'll make it more believable towards the shapes I want, especially where the Pixels are maybe a little um, just noisy, kind of in this reference. They're a little too noisy. So I'm using the smudge tool just to, to soften those edges a little bit. As long as you don't use too big a brush or do too much too soon, the computer sh shouldn't freeze up on you too much. And then save your work every once in a while because this is processing heavy. But here, I'm going to tug across 